Um, okay, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome to uh, to to the session of uh, of today. Um, we we want to 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 have a discussion around um, how do we go about um, uh, doing research uh, during uh, during a period like like uh, the one we are facing, uh, which is uh, the, the, the COVID-19. Um, I, I welcome Prof Mensa uh, online. I welcome uh, uh, Dr. Mari, um, who is my co-host in, in, in this, um, uh, in this, um, in, in these sessions that we, we, we have every, every Friday. So, um, um, let me quickly share the screen. Okay, um, so we we want to, to, to have a discussion on uh, contacting research um, during COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, the the research field has totally changed. It's 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 no longer the same. So we just quickly want to to, to have a discussion around that uh, and and see how we we move uh, we move forth. So I, I, I will leave Dr. Mary to, to, to break the ice uh, by reflecting on, on this topic uh, and give us this food for thought. Uh, then we, we, we take it from, uh, from there. Over to you, Dr. Admire Mary. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Woyo. Uh, welcome uh, everyone to our session. Today we are looking at conducting research uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and I think everyone knows that right now throughout the world we are going through a, a very bad patch in terms of dealing with an invisible uh, enemy and this invisible enemy has not only disrupted our everyday lives but it has also disrupted the way how we do things. It has also disrupted the research process because you know normally we would go into the field and probably go and you know administer our questionnaires in a defined uh, field. But nowadays, uh, given the lockdown, the social distancing measures, the social isolation, uh, the use of masks and all these other things, all that has been disrupted. So essentially we find ourselves in an uncharted ter ter territory, so to speak. It's, a, it's an unprecedented uh, time in history. And there are, no, there, are, there, are, there are no lessons that we can actually even draw on to say, uh, what can we do? Because for our generation, this is the first time that we're probably going through this kind of a, a bad patch. So to just start, uh, I just want to read these uh, two quotes, uh, one from the American Psychological Association uh, in 2020. They said that COVID-19 is, is not just altering everyday life, it is also appending social research as universities and colleges across the world go virtual, researchers are scrambling to protect their human participants, animal subjects, and their scholarship, and also their careers. So essentially, this kind of a quote paints a picture in terms of what we are going through. It's no longer business as usual. So it means we need to find uh, uh, you know, certain kinds of research methods that can actually help us to continue with the research project. Otherwise, if we don't do that, the chances are that we are likely to consider this year uh, a null and void and probably say we have to wait until the situation normalizes to us to continue with the research project. But we, we need to adapt as human beings. Human beings have always been known for their resilience. They've also been known for their you know, adaptability to different circumstances. So we need to be able to adapt to the circumstances. Then the second, uh, quote that I just want to, 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 to read is from Sanketa Panika, again in 2020. Uh, she says, uh, universities are stopping any and all face-to-face -face human research because of the risks involved. So again, essentially, even if you would want to actually go and do face-to-face -face, uh, research with humans, it is increasingly becoming difficult because 
uh, you are not only endangering your lives, but you're also endangering your research participants' uh, lives. So it's always very important to find ways of actually probably doing remote data collection. But that is one thing probably that we are going to discuss in this particular session to say, so if we are faced with this kind of a situation where we pose risks to our participants, but we are also endangering our lives, what kind of remote data collection tools can we actually use so that we can continue with the research project? I think you can move forward, uh, Dr. Woyo, and I think you can take it up from there if you want, or I can still continue. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I think you can, you can, you can go ahead. Then I will come in through and uh, and and reflect on that as well. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, let me continue. So essentially, what we what we are saying that given the the context in which we find ourselves, it pushes us. You know, as researchers, as students, as you know, master students, PhD students, honor students, to start think, rethinking our research methodology. Because remember, when you start uh, thinking about what you want to 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 to, to research about, normally you write down to say, I'm going to, to, to do this and that, I'm going to use the quantitative methodology, I'm going to use the qualitative. But all of a sudden, some of what we have claimed, what we have written in our, as part of our research pro pro proposal, now, now, right now as we speak, some of it is no longer value, you know, relevant, it's no longer, it's no longer applicable. And also even the data collection instrument that you have listed right now, if you are going to use them as you uh, proposed right now, it also becomes very difficult. But also not only that, they also the ethical uh, considerations that you also need to, to look at in light of social distancing, so uh, social isolation, lockdown, seating arrangement protocols, and also face mask, uh, face, uh, mask wearing uh, requirements. Also demands that you need to reflect on your ethical consideration. You need only not only re re reflect on your ethical considerations, but also your data collection instruments. Even the broader research methodology itself also requires you to think about it critically and see whether it is still applicable to your context and how you can actually be able to, 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 to change it if it's possible or to, uh, to adapt uh, to, to, to the changing circumstances. So essentially we are saying, given the situation where we find ourselves where it's increasingly everything is now being done online, because that's probably where it's safer right now, probably the virus you know, cannot affect us in those spaces. So increasingly people are saying we need to look at how we can actually be able to use uh, the online space as a space through which we can continue with the research project, but also continuously making sure that we understand that our, li our, our online, on offline lives are an extension probably of our online lives, so to speak. So the, the, that, 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 that dichotomy needs to be, to be understood that what we do online and what we do offline somehow is pretty much most of the time an extension rather than probably a, 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 a different kind of space where we live. Of course, some would want to, to paint the picture that the two uh, 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 dimensions are pretty much different. So what is the critical question to ask in this kind of in a pandemic where we find ourselves? One of, the, one of the critical questions that we need to ask ourselves as researchers is that, what do we do with traditional data collection instruments in light of the COVID regulations? Should we continue with my focus? Should I continue with my focus group discussions? Should I continue with my face-to-face -face questionnaire distribution? Should I continue with my face-to-face -face interviews? Should I continue probably with my you know, ethnography? What should I do in light of this? Because all of a sudden you can't do things as you used to do probably you know, seven, eight months ago. Things have somehow changed. So these are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself as you, as you look at your, at, at your proposal. But also the other question that you can also ask yourself, do I need to modernize or do I need to digitize uh, my, my data collection instrument so that I can be able to, to still continue with the research process, but also continue to make sure that I adhere to the, you know, the ethical uh, guidelines that are you know, espoused in my particular project. So it is in this context where we need to start thinking critically as, as, as researchers, and also as, uh, as students. The other issue is to also to look at is to say, how do we continue with the research process in a context where social in a social context where the social context itself has been reconfigured? For example, right now, we are talking about homeworking, remote learning, shift work, and many other things. So all of a sudden, even if you want to go to a particular company, probably the chances are that you're not going to find people in one, uh, in one workflow. Most people probably are working from home. They are connecting via, you know, the computers. They are computer, you know, connecting via, you know, different uh, working pl platforms that have been de de designed 
uh, to, to cope with this uh, pandemic. So all of a sudden, it means even if you wanted to go and actually you know, observe people working in a particular environment, it becomes very difficult because chances are that you are going to see or find very few people there. Most of the people actually probably are working from home or they're actually doing shifts. You know, five people are coming today, the other five are coming tomorrow and all these kinds of things. These things also have shifted and also changed the way how we look at the social context, but also the field site itself. So we are also asking ourselves, are our traditional university ethical codes fit for purpose? Or we need to revisit them in light of the emergence of remote data collection. Because remember, most of our ethical codes in terms of how we are going to go about doing our research, most of these are designed before all this remote working became a norm or the new normal. So all of a sudden, I think also even as universities, we need to reflect critically in terms of how are we going to make sure that people continue to do ethically sound uh, studies, but also understanding that the context in the field site has changed. It has shifted significantly. It's no longer the same uh, as it was uh, probably as uh, I pointed out eight or nine months ago. So again, the other issue that we also need to ask ourselves is how do we ensure that uh, reliability and validity of our data sets in an era of you know, remote data collection? So again, even if the context in the field site has shifted and changed or has been disrupted, again, issues of validity, reliability remain key concerns in research. So you should not run away from them. So I think these are some of the issues that I just wanted to, to reflect on as we start so that we can think critically when as you look at your proposal that you probably you came up with four or five months down the line or that you came up with uh, maybe one year ago and think about it now to say, now I am forced to actually do data collection now. What should I do to make sure that I remain relevant in a context in which uh, things have, have changed? I think I can, you can move on to the next slide or you want to come in, Dr. Wall. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. Maybe a, a quick one. So as we rethink uh, our methodology, as we rethink our, um, uh, our data collection, it, it's it's imperative to, to to have this realization that um, a, 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 a a conversation that I had maybe with the, some of the researchers that I know, uh, both seasoned uh, researchers and uh, and new people are quite concerned about uh, the, the the data collection process or the data collection aspects of research. Uh, design given uh, the, the sudden changes that we we find uh, ourselves in globally um, due to, 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 to COVID-19 and, and all that. So um, like what Dr. Mare was saying, uh, in, in this moment of, uh, of COVID-19, uh, we need to think about perhaps emergent designs. Uh, we need to think about you as a researcher, uh, how responsive are you and how responsive uh, our designs should be because everything now at the moment is uh, is taking is taking a new meaning uh, and we, we we need to to move from traditional ways of uh, uh, doing certain things and then come in uh, and do um, the, the the things that are allowed at the moment um, due to social distancing and and um these these concerns are real uh, and these concerns we need to 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 take them into uh, into into space uh, and all that. There are so many concerns around uh, participant access, uh, given that the world is practicing social distancing at home. Uh, such a concern is is is, is quite. Um, how do we identify participants, uh, given that participants are no longer congregating together physically uh, in natural uh, in natural settings? Or in natural groups uh, and, and 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 organizations like what Dr. Mare was saying, um, asking people for our time to do interviews and focus groups are some of the aspects that we we really need to uh, to to think. And these concerns they are central, uh, given that life has radically changed. I think that's the bottom line here. That life has radically changed, uh, and we 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 need to 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 be thinking about how life has changed. Uh, and and all that people are displaced. Uh, people are working from home. Uh, people are out of work. Uh, people are looking for jobs. Uh, people are juggling family responsibilities and home teaching. Um, people are unwell. People are taking care of the ill and and so on. So this global moment importantly necessitates. Uh, that we learn a new set of skills in terms of how do we come up with our research designs uh, so that at the end we, 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 we are able to conduct 
uh, valid uh, valid um, uh, research uh, research online. So um, basically, uh, we are talking about shifting research uh, from 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 traditional data collection uh, to online research, uh, rethinking how do we get rich of uh, our participants, rethinking sampling as we as we know it, uh, because it, it's no longer a case, I, I'm going to the University of Namibia, I'm gonna distribute my, my questionnaires to the lecturers, they are not there. Uh, it's no longer a case that you, you are going to, uh, to, to, to the shop and you, 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 you do on-site distribution. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of rethinking uh, into perhaps what we, are, what, we are, what we are facing. So many academic institutions uh, they have actually paused the traditional research and the all universities and everyone else globally is trying to do uh, is to, to, to reduce unnecessary conduct. Uh, and this is a way of um, protecting participants because as we know it, there's no vaccine, only non-pharmaceutical methods are working. And one of them is social distancing. Uh, there's a shift towards uh, COVID-19 compliant research methods and I'm already, I'm already conditioning myself as an examiner uh, that all studies that are coming through uh, after March 2020, uh, in when I'm examining the research methodology section, I, I am also trying to see how was uh, data collection, how was data collection done, uh, how reliant, uh, how compliant was it with um, COVID-19 regulations. Uh, otherwise, I, I think. There was a paper that I was reviewing two days ago. Uh, the data was collected in March, uh, and uh, I, I, the, the, the people didn't mention these aspects. And in my review, I wrote back to them and say, I am more interested in knowing how these interviews were done. Uh, were they done in person? Uh, and if they were done in person, uh, in, in, in what was the condition of lockdown in that particular country? So that at the end of the day, we don't let out data that is just cooked data, faked data, uh, go out there and it doesn't um, make these things work. So there's also an element of uh, universities coming through, revising their ethical uh, uh, approval process uh, as in, in, in order to, to accommodate remote data collection. Researchers are also getting concerned about the risk of exposure during in-person visits. So people are actually rethinking uh, in all that. So like we said in the beginning, the research field, uh, yes, the research field has changed. Uh, it has changed from a field that used to be stable over the years uh, to a field that is now unstable uh, and the fields of doing research are now uh, multi in, 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 in the sense that if you want to find respondents, instead of going to the university and say, find them in a faculty, uh, you, you, these, these people, some of them are in, in Casablanca at the moment, some of them are in Doha, some of them are in Wintu. So you, you find, so if I am in Doha and you are in Windhoek and you are wherever, then it means wherever we are, those are now multi uh, sited field sites that you need to, uh, to, to, to think about. Uh, over to you, Dr. Murray. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Dr. Warrior. So essentially, as you have rightly pointed out, the, the, the field sites become very multiple. Not only that, instead of actually probably, if you want to reach out to these students, instead of actually probably wanting to see them physically, Nowadays, probably you can actually say, okay, um, I can go to, to the communication department or marketing department and ask for the, 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 email, the, email, the emails for, of everyone, of all the students that you have, and use that as a space through which you can be able to actually to access these students. So you don't really just have to rely on a stable field site, but you also need to think about how you can actually use other, other means, for example, the emails, uh, or even maybe a Facebook group where almost all the students are, are, are members, so that probably there you can then be able to reach out to them if you want to send uh, you know, a personalized, uh, so to speak, uh, questionnaire, or you want to send a, a, a personalized uh, message in terms of what you, ex you want, to, you want to, to look at. So essentially that's how you need to think about how do I move, how do I make sure that I reach out to these people in whatever you know, platform where I can actually find them. Uh, thanks. You can move on, uh, uh, Dr. Woyo. Okay, so so again, we are we. So we are also saying that yeah, there are many examples or many ways actually you can actually be able to to go about uh, doing this uh, kind of uh, 
kind of, uh, of, of research. So essentially we are saying it's about making sure that you can actually use existing online survey tools, or for example, for, for content analysis or ethnographies using existing online interaction uh, as research materials. For example, we are talking about Facebook, we are talking about Twitter, we are talking about WhatsApp, but also they are now Zoom meetings now, there are also Microsoft team meetings, there are blue jeans meetings, all these other spaces are, are new spaces through which we can actually continue with your study without just relying essentially on the traditional uh, uh, field side that we've been talking about. But also we are also saying that even interviews, you can actually do your interviews uh, via the mobile phone or through Skype or through uh, WhatsApp call, or you can do it through a Zoom, there are so many other platforms that you can actually be able to to continue with your with your with the same interview that you wanted to do maybe face to face, but now you can actually use a technology to to mediate that kind of uh, 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 process that you want to to undertake. But also, we are also saying that uh, one thing that I just want to say, which is also very important, is to say nowadays if you have to go to somebody with your physical document some people know now feel that because nobody knows how this uh, virus is being transmitted so people are also apprehensive in terms of actually you know uh, accepting documents that they don't know where they are coming from so you also need to think about that to say if i print my my, my questionnaire right now and i want to distribute somebody would say no what if he, that 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 paper is going to be a career that is going to 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 to, to transmit uh, the COVID virus to, to them? So again, those are things that you need to think about. So probably in that case, you can start thinking about how can I use Google Docs, for example, to come up with a with a questionnaire. How can I use, uh, for example, how can I use uh, Survey Monkey? Uh, as a platform so that I can be able to reach uh, a particular uh, research group that you want to 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 to, to reach out to. Uh, I end I end it back to Dr. Wall if you have something to add. Okay, uh, th thank you. Let me just uh, move forward. So, um, li like we were saying, that uh, most of the world, uh, they, they cannot, uh, most of the world cannot, uh, cannot live home at uh, at the moment. Uh, so, uh, we we still have to to do research, uh, given if, regardless of the fact that uh, the world cannot leave uh, our homes. Uh, and it 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 kinds of raises a lot of uh, a lot of questions around how do we manage the entire data collection uh, process, uh, perhaps using online uh, methods and, and all that. Uh, do, we, do we need to, to postpone the data collection? Uh, do we need to conduct interviews and focus groups online? Uh, do we need to change uh, maybe uh, the, the, the sources that we were using? Do we need to, to, to come up with uh, different, uh, different data collection methods uh, since maybe um, interviews are virtual and working from home, uh, it precipitates issues of privacy, uh, confidentiality on both sides of the screen, uh, and 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 all that. All these other issues they need to be to to be really addressed as we we do this. So it is possible. Um, so to answer the first one, do I need to postpone my data collection? It is still possible for you to continue. Uh, and finish your field work under these constraints. But you really need to think about other issues that I, I am raising, like uh, how, how do you gonna deal with issues of privacy uh, and, uh, and confidentiality on both sides of the screen, from my side and from your side. Um, uh, and all of which must be addressed and um, uh, explicated uh, in, 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 the, in your research design and all that. So people really need to, to rethink their data collection instruments, uh, taking into, into account these issues of privacy uh, and confidentiality that I am talking about. Uh, I, I, I tell you that I have a colleague uh, who is doing research uh, on difficult conversation around family dynamics. Uh, and as a result now, the person is forced to, to, to conduct online interviews since participants are, are at home. But this researcher is actually worried about the disclosure and con is, uh, is worried uh, in terms of uh, disclosure and confidentiality reasons. Uh, the researcher is worried about asking participants for their time uh, and to be interviewed about fam family dynamics while uh, they are at home. So if you are at home and you are online and I'm talking about family dynamics, obviously it means my wife will know, my kids will know, and it, it, the, the kind of issues get, uh, get conflated in that space. So 
let's rethink our data collection instruments. Uh, le let's also think about um, revisiting our field site. Uh, because at the moment, you need to know what is your field site, uh, what kind of changes needs to take place uh, if you are to continue and finish your, your, your research work. Uh, and let's also think about um, methodology is something that you need to learn uh, and it's something that you need to adapt during your, your field work. So there is a lot, of, um, a, lot, a lot of ways of doing online surveys. So instead of doing, doing the, 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 like what Dr. Mari was saying, instead of doing the in-person distribution of the questionnaire, you can actually convert it and put it on Qualtrics. You can actually convert it and put it on Google Documents. Uh, we, have a, we have a survey that we are doing at the moment in Iran. Uh, and we are doing it online and, and all that. Uh, you, you can actually do is use survey monkeys. Uh, so the, there are so many aspects that we can use to, uh, to, to, to digitize, uh, to digitize all these things. You can start your document on Google Documents. Uh, uh, then you do some group think, which might take some, some week for you. Uh, then use some email prompts uh, so that people get reminded that they need to complete this. Uh, this instrument for you uh, and, and all that you, you can create a, a WhatsApp group, um, a WhatsApp group and give written permission to use all the charts uh, of the data that you are, you are collecting uh, and, and so many other stuff. So it's, it's all about how do we rethink, uh, revisiting our site, rethinking the process of data collection, uh, doing online ethnography, um, telephonic interviews, and by the way, telephonic interviews have long been there before COVID-19. So it, 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 we need to know that this is not entirely new space, but it is something that has been there. But uh, the, the realities of using it that time and the realities of using it now is, is, is what is different. Uh, Zoom sessions, you can run your, 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 your thing on Twitter as long as privacy issues are, are dealt with, you can do it. Facebook now has got rooms. You can also do it there and, uh, and, and all that. Um, I, I leave this to Dr. Mari or I put you on the next slide. Okay, you can move on to the next slide so that we move on quickly. So now we want to look at tips for conducting research during a pandemic. And uh, here we want to start with what we call photo, video, or voice elicitation as a method that you can actually use to, 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 to conduct your, 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 your research. And this particular method involves asking research participants to use a camera or voice recording app, often on their smartphone, to take photos or make videos or voice memos about their everyday practices, interactions that, uh, that they can share with you as a researcher. So essentially, you can actually use this uh, method to say, OK, I'm doing this particular research. I'm, I'm going to send you questions. But instead of uh, typing, you can actually do a voice note and send it back to me. That's what we call voice elicitation, or it can be a video, or it can be a photo, depending on the methodology or the method that you are going to use. So this is another way of actually doing research remotely. So you, you email, I think most journalists actually are doing that nowadays, because all of a sudden they can't really uh, go and uh, see their sources are uh, in person. So most of the time they'll probably just send you a, a, a two, two questions or three questions and then send it to you and say, can you, can you do it uh, using a voice note? And then that voice note can always be transcribed and uh, you can make sense of it uh, based on your data analysis uh, that you are going to do. So you, as a researcher, you can actually provide them with questions or prompts to direct uh, their recordings and even documentation to say, what exactly are you expecting them to do? How long should be that, uh, that, uh, that, that voice note be? Or how long should be that video? Maybe it's usually because of data issues, probably you can just say, I mean, but I need a five minute or you know, a five, a five minute uh, voice note, or I need a three minute uh, video where you are telling me how you are coping with uh, COVID-19 or how you've been coping with e-learning, for example. And then you send it to, to, your, to your respondent. The respondent sends it back and then you archive it. But make sure, one thing that you need to know is that when you're doing online research, you must always make sure that you archive your data as regularly as possible. Because remember, these places are, are dynamic. They're also always changing. So all of a sudden, your, 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 your phone can reboot and you can lose everything. So you must always make sure that you have got somewhere or some kind of you know, a database where you can actually put your, 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 your data so that you can keep it. Otherwise, if you are not uh, careful, you can end up doing research three times, four times, because you know, remember online things are very, very fast and very dynamic. Uh, you can move on, Dr. Wall, to the next slide. 
Again, you can also use what we also call the, the diary method or the journaling method. Uh, this is also another method that has always been there, but now it has been digitized, so to speak. Uh, this method, uh, method can, can also be combined with asking participants to complete diaries or journals using pen or paper or voice memos or voice notes or even online platforms. So diaries can be combined with interviews and other methods where sometimes the diary can act as a prompt for further, uh, for further discussion. So let's say you, you are doing research around probably how people coped with the lockdown uh, you know, situation. So probably you can distribute to something like almost like a diary where every day somebody gives you a diary of what they did throughout the day. For example, somebody is going to tell you maybe I woke up. I assisted my kid to actually do e-learning. After that, I also do some, I did some house chores. After that, maybe I, I went jogging and then came back. And then after that, maybe I, I, I had lunch or something like that. So you are, you are pushing somebody to keep a journal in terms of almost everyday routine in terms of what they are doing. Or maybe even at work, what is it that they've done? Maybe if they are working at home, what is it that they've done, which is different from what they would have done probably when they were working uh, at home? So a journal, uh, a journal or diary kind of a method can actually assist you to be able to deal with some of those issues. So we are also saying that we are also saying that diaries can actually be structured like almost like a questionnaire, uh, and, and a, a questionnaire, and aiming for quantitative analysis or even semi-structured, depending on what exactly you want to to to, to reach out to. But we are also saying diaries can also be used over months, hours, depending on the focus of the study. And they can, you can use interval-based you know, sampling, you know, you know, depending on what you exactly want to, to achieve. You, know, you can record something every hour or every day, or it can be event-based where you are focusing on a specific event at a particular point in time. But we are also saying that diaries can also take many different forms, in vi including visual, a collage, uh, photo-based, as well as even spoken or written. Uh, depending on the situation also that is at hand. So this is also another method that you can even st start thinking about how it can actually be able to help you to, to complement your other data collection instruments so that at the end of the day, you can be able to have richer and also maybe insightful uh, research uh, from that. You can move on to the next slide. So the other issue again is to say you can actually do an online interview. I think we have already touched on it uh, briefly to say online interviews have always been there, but now more than ever, they are more than uh, they are more actually more important now because they allow us to be able to engage with our data and also to engage with our respondents uh, even in the comfort of our own home. So we are saying an online interview is often structured conversation consisting of a question that are set and an interviewer and interviewee. Uh, who actually is able to, to, to deal with uh, our different issues and the technology used to conduct and record the interview. And what makes them different to, to in-person uh, interviews that the role of technology is always very key in terms of facilitating real-time co-presence -pres co and also interactivity, but also it allows you to be able to follow up you know, there and there to say, can you exp explain further why, what you mean by this? So unlike, uh, Unlike the, the, the diary where somebody, you send somebody questions and they have to send them back. On this one, you're actually interacting, or maybe you're doing it via phone or you're doing it via WhatsApp call, and you can actually be able to follow, ask follow-up questions there so that you can have an understanding of what is really happening. So there are so many ways of actually doing an online interview. You can actually use a mobile phone, you can use your laptop, using audiovisual interfaces such as Skype. You can use Zoom, Microsoft Teams. There are so many other open, you know, technologies that are there that can actually allow you to continue with your. So you can actually change your your face-to-face -face interviews to say now because of COVID-19, I ended up using online interviews so that I can be able to continue with my study. Because at that point in time, in-person visits or in-person or face-to-face -face, uh, interviews were not uh, something that could uh, actually work given the lockdown regulations around even regulations around uh, social distancing issues around face mask uh, wearing and all these other issues. I don't know if you have anything to add there, Dr. Woyo, before we can move on, or you can move on. Uh, no, no, not really. So live interviews, they um, they allow the interviewer to, to seek clarification, like uh, what Dr. Mari was uh, was saying, uh, and you'll be able to, to follow through with threads of, uh, of that conversation. Uh, additionally, this kind of uh, online interviews they also allow you to, uh, to, to check uh, whether your participants are able to understand the meaning of what is being said. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it means that you, you can conduct 
uh, also a real time interview only uh, in, in, in the technology mediated space. Uh, and you can actually do it more also in the conversational format, um, though it is going to be um, covered in different uh, spatial locations and, and context. So it is actually also very possible to conduct uh, anonymous interviews, uh, even the chats. Uh, that there is always a, a way of uh, a way of uh, of doing uh, doing all that and and all and something. So even one way of doing it, even you are doing it on Zoom, you can actually ask your participants uh, to just simply log in with a pseudonym, and I will call myself X, uh, and then it it, it gonna protect them. Uh, and perhaps I don't show my screen uh, as long as. My, my voice is, is, is not shared with, uh, with, uh, with anybody. Uh, I, I will leave Dr. Mari to, to talk about the enactment videos, uh, and then we move to the next slide. Okay, so uh, another method that can also be used, which is also very handy, is what we call re reenactment uh, videos, uh, whereby you can actually use this uh, within the what we call ethnographic fieldwork. Is a way of documenting people's everyday lives again, often in their homes. So here, the researchers have usually done this by usually using videos. If they allow their participants around, you know, asking questions as they go. So you can actually, you know, again use videos to to say you post a question via a video, and then again the 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 the, the, the participant also uh, send back a video. And you continuously continue to use this kind of a method to be able to, to, to have some kind of you know, interaction in terms of what is really happening. So this method can also be revised to ask participants to make their own reenactment videos using their own phone, possibly provided with wearable video camera such as GoPro action camera, and, uh, and then sharing the videos uh, online with, uh, with, 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 with the researchers. So, you, 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 are, you, you, you can actually do that by actually saying, for example, let's say you are doing a funded research and you know that uh, for you, to, you, you, you want to continuously to be, to want to be continuously in, engaged with your research participants. So you can actually buy these people uh, smartphones. You go and leave those smartphones with them if they are probably in a, in a rural area, you give them probably data bundles so that they can be able to interact with you. So from time to time, you'll be asking them, you know, Different things that are happening within their context are uh, using these uh, this, this technologies, and they will be sending you videos, or probably if they can actually do some 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 homemade videos in terms of what what is really happening in the village at that point in time. If there was a, an event, they can actually go there and capture the event and then send it to you, so that you can be able to see what is really happening in that. So even that can also be done even in within a company environment where you can actually give people uh, who, those people who have access to smartphones can actually then tell you about what is really happening if you want to follow or observe certain kinds of things that are happening in that particular organization. So it depends on what exactly you want to be to be looking at. Uh, you can move on to the next uh, slide. Then we also have got what we call uh, asynchronous uh, video uh, interviews. Uh, asynchronous uh, interviews are also called uh, epist epistolary interviews. Uh, these were first uh, you know, talked about by Debenham in 2001. And uh, you know, they, they are one-to-one -one interviews mediated by technology. And the method allows both the interviewer and the respondent to select suitable interview times, provide times to consider questions and responses, and to eliminate the need for transcription. So in this kind of a, in, in interview, for example, you can actually say, I'm going to, uh, will be, be almost like WhatsApp chatting. So I ask you a question, you respond. So instead of you then, uh, having to, to then come and then try to transcribe that data. Already the person has already given you a written uh, response. So it's an issue of just cop copying and pasting to another document and keeping it in terms of how they answered a particular question. So we call that asynchronous uh, 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 interviews. And also we are also saying that the interviewer sets the pattern of the, the formality of the interview, interview, ensuring that the online format is used to organize and to facilitate talk rather than to constrain it length, aims, and format of the interview, and the need for spontaneous or even researched responses, whether the reference can be made to external material should also be established at the outset before you actually start the interview. You can move on to the next slide, uh, to William. So instead yes. of, uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. You can move on, you can move on. Oh, okay, so instead of uh, contacting uh, focus uh, groups, 
discussions in a, in 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 person or in face to face. Um, like we have stated earlier on, there are actually platforms that are available uh, that we as researchers, we can actually customize them uh, and use them in an online group discussion. Uh, and this, this can be even moderated, uh, even moderated uh, in, in, in real time. So most of the marketing research companies, they offer such platforms. So you need to just upload your questions and, and check in to observe people typing their answers. So meaning you can also ask them to elaborate in real time if, uh, if you, 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 you don't seem to, to, to get that kind of response uh, perfectly, uh, perfectly well. So settings can even be arranged so that uh, participants can, uh, can see each other's responses in real time if you wish to, to encourage uh, a, a group a group discussion. So basically from what we are preaching here is uh, you, you would find out that there are actually more means of continuing with our studies, uh, especially in terms of the data collection uh, data collection process uh, and uh, and many other stuff that uh, that will be able to uh, to come through. Uh, let me leave Dr. Mary to talk about uh, the synchronous uh, video based focus group interviews, and we we see how far we we need to push this through. Okay, thanks uh, again, Dr. Royal. So we can also have what we call online synchronous video based focus group discussions, just like any other focus group discussions. You know, these can also be used as a tool to explore perceptions, feelings, and thinking about issues, ideas, products, services, and even opportunities. And in, in many ways, focus group discussions are usually unique because of their focus on interpersonal interaction. So unlike one-to-one -one interviews, focus group discussions allow other people to chip in and come in and probably, you know, uh, you know and, and raise uh, pertinent issues, which can also allow other people that are also part of the conversation to come in and, you know, and, and, and agree or disagree with whatever point of, uh, of, 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 point of, of concern would have been raised in that particular setting. So we are also saying that this can also be done online. For example, right now you can actually create your own WhatsApp group and say, I'm going to cause so usually we are saying focus group discussions should be made up of people between six to, to 10 people. So you can actually constitute a, a focus group discussion uh, on WhatsApp using a WhatsApp group where you've got about bringing five to six people. And then you, you, you say, okay, we are going to allow, we're going to agree that we are going to have our interview probably at between three and five. And then between three and five, probably that's all what you are doing, making sure that you facilitate. You as, as, as a researcher, your role there is just to facilitate the conversation. It's not about imposing your own views about what things should be, should, should be but you also have to have um, what we call a semi-structured or a, 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 some kind of a guide to say, these are the issues that we are going to discuss uh, between three and five. And then you facilitate or you moderate uh, that conversation. You can do it a life or you know where somebody can actually be people are seeing each other or you can also do it a way by people are probably using maybe a texting and you know responding to questions that you have uh, posed so that at the end of the day you will be able, will be able to understand what uh, people would have said uh, with regards to that particular particular issue. So it depends on how you are going to constitute that focus group discussion. So you can have as many as many as four, five, six focus group discussions, but probably with different people that you can be able to do. And from those uh, online uh, video based uh, focus group discussion, then you can see probably there are certain people that are going to be dominating in terms of their, their, their contributions to that uh, focus group discussion. You can then recruit these people for further one-to-one, uh, -one, probably telephonic interviews or WhatsApp uh, interviews where you can then be able to articulate for them to allow, we allow, allow them to actually to articulate certain issues that they could have not been able to use uh, during uh, uh, the, the, the focus group discussion. So what are the platforms that you can actually use to be able to do this? There are so many platforms as we have already pointed out that you can actually be able to use. We've talked about Microsoft Teams, we've talked about Zoom, we've talked about WebEx, there's GoToMeeting, there's Google Meet, they are um, countless. You can talk about uh, Blue Jeans, you know, there's Blackboard. There are so many platforms that are there right now, especially now video video based uh, platforms that you can actually use to constitute focus group discussions, but also constitute one-to-one -one interviews that you can also use uh, to be able to, 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 to to, to, to facilitate your, 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 your research uh, process. Uh, I, I, I don't know if Dr. Oyo, you've got anything to say or we can move on because we want to finish. Uh, no, let's, let's move on. Um, I think these are some of the links where people can, yeah. can, search, uh, can yeah. search for them. 
um, le let me begin on this one uh, and, and, and say uh, that, um, like I said in, in the beginning, um, these methods of, of, of doing data collection, especially in, in the pandemic, uh, they, they present us with a whole set of, of, of ethical considerations that we, we, we need to, uh, to, 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 lo to look at. Uh, and it's very critical that we, we, we address all this. So all we are saying is moving your data collection wholly to online. Uh, for me, uh, as, as a researcher, it, 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 it creates a specific validity uh, and ethical issues. And I, I, I'm, 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 I, I would want people uh, who are doing research to, to make sure that these issues of these issues of validity, these issues of ethics, uh, are actually identified and addressed as part of their research, uh, as part of their research design. So, for a start, you would find out that um, uh, if 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 your human research uh, ethics committee has already approved your face-to-face uh, methods, uh, you would need to 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 you wish to you you might need now to modify these along the lines of the suggestions uh, we were talking uh, in terms of social distancing and, and all that. And most universities ethics committee uh, they would require a modification request uh, and perhaps uh, relook into your uh, your approval process. You also need to, to, to consider the affective atmosphere of conducting any kind of social research, uh, especially in, in the pandemic, where normal routines are disrupted and people are feeling uncertain uh, and worried and are ill and all this. And like I said, uh, these are some of the issues that really needs to be, uh, to, to be articulated, uh, identified and addressed as part of, uh, as part of the, the research, uh, research design. Uh, people are living uh, in environments where they are subjected to harassment, violence, uh, violence by other family members. I, I have talked about the issue of privacy uh, being, uh, being one of the things that we need to consider uh, when we are doing uh, when we are doing online uh, online research. Uh, and on the other hand, some people are confined, they are bored, they are restless. This disease is very scary. Uh, and even though we might be in, in good health, uh, we, we, we still feel like it's, 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 it's just close to, to me and, and all that. So we may welcome the opportunity to be part of your research project, uh, but there are also issues that we need to, uh, to, to, think, uh, to think about and, and all that. So in, 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 terms of, uh, in terms of all this, all I'm trying to say is, uh, please le let us rethink about issues of validity. Let us rethink about issues of ethics. And I would appreciate a situation where these ethical issues and aspects of validity are actually addressed in the, uh, in the, in the research design. Uh, in, in, in context of people being confined and all that, uh, researchers in this period, uh, they actually need to be more intentional in terms of how do they plan to do all these things uh, they must. They must. They actually need to be more intentional in terms of um, rehearsing their online data collection situations, be it interviews, be it focus group, uh, so that the research experience in itself becomes generative, uh, so that the research experience in itself become positive, uh, become engaged, become uh, enrich, enriching, uh, and and so forth. So in, in, in other words, there is also need for researchers during this time to, to read uh, more about how to do data collection in trauma-informed uh, spaces, uh, trauma-informed interviews, for instance, uh, and, and all that, so that we, we, we tend to build uh, an understanding of strategies uh, that we can use for effective data collection, uh, coming up with effective data collection instruments and techniques that we are suitable for approaching certain participants uh, with care uh, and, and, and all that. So it's, it's, it's actually very important to do that. And more importantly, again, before I, I leave this to, to Dr. Mary, um, people need to approach study participants with respect, uh, especially now in, uh, in COVID-19. Uh, they need to approach participants or respondents 
with the humility. Uh, we are already having a lot of work to do. Uh, we are teaching online and we are working more than uh, I was reading that even my working day at the moment is perhaps uh, 48 minutes longer than uh, a, 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 a day that I work uh, before before the pandemic. So people need to, to, to approach each other with uh, respect, humility, appreciation of the time we're going to give to you when we are doing your survey. Uh, so make every effort to, to schedule around the needs of the participants, the needs of uh, of the respondents, uh, e.g. taking into account that people could be schooling kids at home, uh, they are, uh, we have work schedules. Um, so let, let, let your participants know that uh, an ideal interview scenario will provide them with confidential space. An ideal data collection scenario is going to, to allow them to, to be able to, to do all that. So um, remember, we are in, 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 an, in a space which is very strange, uh, in a space which is very scary, uh, especially this time of social distancing um, and all that. So we hope this discussion is going to be uh, to be good to you. Over to you, Dr. Mari, so you can take this one and finish the rest of the left, uh, the slides left. Okay, you can move to the next, uh, the last one, so that we can just finalize. Okay, so so what are the key takeaways that we can actually get from this particular presentation? I think the most important thing is to understand that certainly our the research process has been affected by COVID-19. Our field site is no longer the same. It is shifted. It has been disrupted. We are no longer in, in living in, in, in natural settings that we used to have. You know, we are we are all over the show. So we're talking about multi-sited kind of field sites that we are talking about. So in that space, you need to be very flexible, but you also need to be able to understand that you need to use our digital our research methods so that you can be able to reach your participants and also be able to, to continue with your, with, with, your, with, your, with your studies. Otherwise, if you don't do that and you become very inflexible, it means that you are likely not to be able to finish as and when you want to finish it, uh, or you are going to be forced to wait until the world finds a vaccine or a drug to deal with the COVID-19. But we are saying, I think we need to appreciate that digital research methods can also actually help us to continue with the research project. But also, we are also saying, be that as it may, we still need to adhere to ethical guidelines, but we should not be enslaved by them. Yes, we do have ethical guidelines, but we, we should understand that these ethical codes must also be revisited uh, so that they can speak to the changed uh, circumstances where we find ourselves. Because remember, we said most of our ethical codes were actually designed prior to this uh, digital era where we find ourselves. And therefore, some of them are still coached in that traditional research methodology, you know, kind of a setup where we are just talking about informed consent, where we are talking about confidentiality, where we are talking about, but we need to start thinking about issues around privacy, cybersecurity, and all these other issues that are coming to the fore, data mining, what does it mean, and all that kind of thing. How do you make sure that you don't just mine other people's data without also uh, probably, you know, you know, you know, helping them to, 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 be, to live better lives if you are to use that. And also we need to be flexible uh, reflexive and innovative and use methods that work in our context so that at the end of the day we can be able to continue with our research project so don't be don't 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 be don't have a, 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 a research method that are cast in stone where you are saying ah okay i i have designed my 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 my, my 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 research design in such a way that i'm just going to use questionnaires i'm going to use this but what if the questionnaire no longer applies or it's now impossible for you even to to administer it because probably your your sampling frame or your your, your population somehow makes it you know the way how it is now scattered all over the world it makes it very difficult for you to continue with that kind of a questionnaire what are you going to do so you need to think about those things and see how you can be able to 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 to, to move are beyond the, 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 the rigidity that is associated with traditional research methods and understand that there are also digital research methods that can be used to make sure that I do the same research. And then finally, the other issues I've already pointed out, when you're doing studies online, it's always important to understand, yes, online platforms allow for automated archiving of data, but also we must also know that these platforms are very dynamic. Data that you will see today may be deleted tomorrow or the person that is probably posted today may delete it tomorrow. So you must always be in a constant rest to make sure that you 
you archive manually, but you also use also uh, automated manual uh, archiving system so that you can keep your data. Otherwise, you will spend the you just say, ah, okay, I already have my data set there. I'm going to 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 to, to then uh, be able to retrieve it probably after six months. And by that six months, everything has already been deleted, or people who had posted in that particular group have exited, exited, or they have you know deleted whatever they have posted. It depends because people post uh, based on different uh, circumstances, and these things can always be deleted. So you must always know that. So it's very important that you know the art of actually archiving data online and also adhere to ethical uh, issues that come with online uh, data collection. I think with that, we are done for today. I think we are ready for questions, uh, Dr. White. Uh, thank you for for that, Dr. Mare. Um, I, I have some 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 question here for those that are watching via YouTube. Um, the the question is, um, um, thanks so much for for this session. I am really stuck on how to go about uh, my feminology study on how people within my area are living through gentrification. Um, I, I'm not sure maybe Precious can, can come through with further information on this uh, because she's only saying that uh, she is stuck on how to go about feminology study uh, on how people within, uh, within the area she's conducting research uh, are living through gentrification. Um, maybe Dr. Mary, you may speak to that. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I, I think she, she was once, uh, I think I remember she once was part of she this. She was class. once online, yeah. Yeah, she was once here. And I remember she was saying, I think she's doing a research around gentrification in Brownfontein in South Africa, if I'm not mistaken. So essentially, yeah. I think what is also very important with this particular, uh, with this particular uh, research is that now that all of a sudden she can't move from, from flat to flat in a space like Brownfontein, you know, doing interviews or even actually doing focus group discussions with people. I think the best thing is to make sure that you you you, you know the real East, the, the, the people that run the real estate there or real estate agents there, so that you can get emails of people that are in different uh, flats, so that you can if, once you have that data set or that data database, you can then follow up on people using probably their WhatsApp numbers, or you can follow up with people and using their email addresses, and from there you can then be able to build a, a almost like a, a database in terms of who else can you can actually be able to interview online or offline, depending on how you are going to be able to, 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 to package and design your, your study. So for me, the most important thing is to make sure that she gets, she gets to know who is who in that particular area where gentrification is actually happening. Uh, and also, what is it, what, what, what are their contact details in terms of email, WhatsApp, or even phone number, so that then she can follow up in terms of what really needs to be done to get the data that she wants. Okay, uh, thank you for, for that. I, I hope she is still online the other side. Uh, since she is not on Zoom, um, uh, maybe she, 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 she got the response. Anyway, she's going to get it later, even if she, she has to revisit the link. Um, so uh, maybe if there are any, 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 any questions, uh, we, we are welcome to, to take them. Uh, Prof Menza is hiding behind the uh, I don't know if he has got any views uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, data collection uh, in, in a pandemic. We always want to, to tap uh, through uh, his wisdom as, uh, as, as, as a professor, someone who has lived between uh, these two interesting times for a long time now uh, and, and, and done research also for a long time. Yes, he's still around, but... The problem is that he has never done research under such circumstances. So he is rather interested in listening to what the young people who are familiar with all these new techniques have to suggest about how to go forward during this terrible time. So I'm paying close attention to the fine suggestions you are making. And I'm sure the students will benefit from it because they have just started doing their research. And now there is this big setback. So some of the suggestions you have made will give them ideas about how to move forward. Oh, th thank you, Prof Menza. We, we appreciate that kind of feedback. It gives us comfort um, and, uh, and all that. Uh, let me see in the chat box. Uh, in the chat box, someone is saying, um, any proposal on how I can go about an ethnograph study 
uh, Dr. Murray, you are the, 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 the guru of this. Um, what, are, what is your, your submission to that? Uh, any proposal on how I can go about uh, an ethnograph study? Okay, thanks, uh, Dr. Murray. So in terms of ethnography, generally, the assumption when you're doing an ethnograph is that you have to go into a space or into a place and stay there for a long time. For example, let's say you want to do uh, an ethnographic study amongst maybe the, the, the Yimbas, for example. You have to go to their village or their place and stay with them probably for three, four, five, six months or even a year so that you understand uh, what, they, what they are going through. But unfortunately, this time around, that is also not possible and it's very difficult. So essentially what we are saying, you need to adopt what we are calling uh, visual ethnography or online ethnography, where the same people, if they have got probably, let's say they've got a WhatsApp group of the Yimbas, or, you know, for example, or the you know WhatsApp group for the Sun community, for example, or there's a Facebook, you know, Facebook group for them. You can actually go in there and still be able to observe and make inferences based on their interactions, their, you know, their, 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 their engagements in that particular uh, uh, you know, space where they find. So it's about just moving from relying on traditional ethnograph where you have to do it face to face and do it probably online and be able to still be able to make the same kind of inferences uh, that you could have made probably uh, when you could have done it probably face to face. So it's for me, I would say she, he or she must digitize her, her ethnography so that she can be able to still continue with the same kind of study. but are doing it uh, using the online uh, lenses. Okay, uh, thank you. I, I don't see any other question um, from the participants. Maybe they are okay with that uh, and or they don't have uh, challenges uh, in doing research uh, in, 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 in such spaces. Uh, Dr. Mnangatire, where are you hiding? I, I saw you joining. Um, you must okay. say one or two things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are muted, so if you can unmute your mic and. Okay. And oh yes, I'm. I'm. I'm very much here and and following uh, very nicely. I, I don't have much to say. Just to to say, I I think. I have done some few data collection online. I, I think I did part of my PhD. I collected data uh, telephonically. Uh, I think recently we have also collected data through, I think, through Google Forms. Um, then also we have done some focus group via, via WhatsApp. Uh, and telephonic interviews. But what I can share with you for anyone who wants to do now, uh, the, the few things is just the experiences that are there. We are still interrogating issues of ethics around all these things. Uh, will we be able to still maintain issues of confidentiality and privacy in, in that process? It's something we are still interrogating and we may have to move uh, to, a to, a, uh, to a point where we talk about uh, new standards of what is the acceptable level of privacy, what is the acceptable level of confidentiality. Yeah, so we, 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 my experience is basically that, like, if you have to do a focus group, uh, you need to consider challenges that your participants will face, especially with connectivity. If you are going to do, like, maybe, uh, a, let's say a WhatsApp call or a Zoom meeting, will all your participants be able to connect and you be able to do that? Maybe you may find that maybe it's better to do um, uh, a WhatsApp writing based kind of discussion. We have done one, but also you need to very much organize the participants. Um, Dr. Mare talked about some dominating I think if it's not well moderated, you will have six participants, but only three will participate in that particular focus group. Uh, in, in what we did, we basically assigned each, each participant a number and the, uh, they had, we had to save them with pseudonames. Uh, then when they do that, uh, we, we, they had to speak in, in turns. Not necessarily that they will speak every time, 
but we had to um, encourage them that when your turn comes to speak, you need to interrogate the issue that has been uh, uh, presented. So that way we, we realized that it really improved participation across uh, the, the, the participants. I think that is uh, some of the experiences uh, I've had around that. Um, I think the other issues are issues of recording, especially when you are doing it telephonically. I know some may have uh, telephones that come with inbuilt uh, recording capabilities, but some do not have that. Uh, there are options of applications that can you can download that will record that. But some of the applications, you actually need to test them before you do all these things because some will allow you to record but they don't allow you to download your data so that you can you can actually keep it uh i remember when i was doing for my phd i didn't have a, an advanced phone so i had to talk to uh, my participants that this is what is going to happen you will be on loudspeaker and then when you are speaking i will have a recorder next to the phone so that it can actually record <laughs> Yeah, I think basically this is what I can share with. Uh, and so to thank Dr. Mare and Dr. Woyo, these are very key issues. I've had some students who got ethics approval and they, they've been asked to write something that now we approved before issues of COVID, issues of social distancing and the like. Now you need to motivate how are you going to collect data still in this era of COVID? so that we can uh, uh, grant you permission I, I, with the updated the considerations. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mnangati. I think that's for, all what I can say. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for, for that. Uh, I think we, we, have, we have learned uh, that we, 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 we need to, to reflect on the kind of infrastructure we, we are having uh, because it is going to, to have an impact on, uh, on data collection um, I don't see so many questions coming through. Vivian is saying we are paralyzed. We are not yet there. Um, maybe it's a comment. I don't know how far they are paralyzed at the University of Pretoria and all that. Um, but uh, this discussion is to, to, to just take you from, uh, from being paralyzed and then uh, try to see how best can the study go forth uh, and move uh, and finish the the the, the masters uh, and finish uh, the, the the doctoral studies and and all that. Um, so yeah, the the issues of ethics they they need to be dealt with, and um, we, we 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 the co -co data collection in COVID present us with a whole new lot of ethical issues uh, that we need to think about uh, and probably come up with uh, in terms of solutions to to that. Uh, Dr. Mare, uh, people are quiet, so it, it looks like um, we, 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 we did a good job or uh, they are confused. It's either two of those things. Uh, I can speak for them but... a little. <laughs> I think this is a very new area you have explored. And the, the students are still reflecting, in my opinion, they are still reflecting about the suggestions that you have made. So I oh. think we should share the slides with them and give them time to ponder it over and throw it up and down in their heads and see how it fits in with the work they've been doing, the stages they are in their work and how they need to modify what they have been doing to be able to continue with it. I'm sure you will be getting a lot of questions later if you allow that so that- okay reflected a little then they can pose questions about what they have learned uh thank you prof that's the reason why we we, we need you around you you always give us some kind of uh, direction in terms of uh these things so thank you for that uh we we, we will allow them to to reflect on later uh and i think uh when we uh come back maybe next week if there are other issues regarding um regarding um, these aspects of methodology, uh, especially in, 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 in terms of how do we collect data in COVID-19, uh, we'll always uh, have a look at that and, uh, and, uh, and talk to, to, to them. Uh, Dr. Mare, do you have anything to say or we work towards closing the meeting?
Okay, thanks, uh, Dr. Warren. So for me, I think the, the mo most important issues to say, I think, let us not be paralyzed by, you know, you know the, the, the state where we find ourselves in, but let us be like all other humans that have come before us. I think they lived uh, under harsh conditions than us. I think those who went through probably the period of the Spanish flu, uh, the babonic, uh, babonic plague and all these other things that have happened in history. I think they went through even worse, uh, worse uh, situations than us. But let us not be, 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 be hamstrung by these uh, circumstances which we find ourselves in. Let us be adaptive, let us be flexible. Let us always you know, engage with our, with our, with our you know, research proposal or you know, where we find in this whatever stage where you find yourself in. Always think about it to say, how can, I, how can I be able to continue doing this project? But also bearing in mind that you know, circumstances in, in which I'm actually doing the research has also changed. So it's very important that we do that so that at the end of the day when we write, we must be able to reflect, especially under our research methodology chapter, that I actually did this research under these conditions. And these are the challenges that, you know, that particular conditions are actually presented to you. And how did you manage to offset these challenges? And what are the ethical issues that you, 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 you managed to deal with in that particular order? Because otherwise, as Dr. Woyo has already pointed out, anybody who is going to start uh, you know, in examining thesis that were written under these conditions, obviously that would be one thing that is on top of their head to say, okay, you are saying you have submitted this thesis, but how did you how did you reflect on what actually happened during that particular time that you say that you actually did a data collection? And how did you go about doing it in an ethically and also in a in a legally uh, you know in, in a legally sound manner uh, during that particular era? So it's very important because one thing that we certainly don't want to hear is the situation where people have to violate uh, lockdown regulations so that just they can actually finish a, a research project. Rather, find ways of offsetting the issues that are coming as a result of this lockdown so that you can be able to do your research uh, in a manner that can actually uh, you know, help you, but also enrich the, 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 the project. So essentially what we are saying that some of you who are writing PhDs and masters, you've got an ample opportunity for us to actually write for us papers reflecting on how we can actually do research during what during a pandemic because you are the ones who are actually doing field work during a, a, a situation where we find ourselves so you need to write papers so that you can inform future generations that are also going to to to, to experience similar or even worse our conditions so that they can be able to know how the how you manage to deal with it so i thank you with that and i think if there are no questions, I think then we can close the meeting and see what we can do for next uh, week. Uh, there's, there's, there's one who, uh, who has actually put one question here. Uh, the question reads that um, with questionnaires distributed digitally, uh, how do you ensure the respondent is the right person without face-to-face -face validation? Some may give other incompetent people without uh, the researchers knowledge uh, that's the question in 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 the chat box um dr Mnangatire, how do you respond to that okay. that is a very valid uh, observation and very very important um However, while there may be no uh, means to verify some of the things, uh, uh, unless if you are doing a, a, a Zoom discussion or a video calling uh, interview, you, you may not be able to know if you are not uh, known to this person. Because remember, it all starts from the recruitment process. How do we recruit participants? Dr. Mare made reference to the recruitment that you may need to go to, to an institution, not necessarily go, but contact an institution, uh, provide your, your, your details and the, the, the approvals for your study so that they give you access to, 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 to participants where you need to recruit participants from. So the most likely is that if we have followed that proper recruitment um, strategy, we are likely to, to get the right people to come in and participate. We cannot rule it out that um, uh, one would choose to participate and give someone, please complete this uh, questionnaire for me. It's possible it can happen, but will that affect the overall the findings of your study? Um, maybe not. So I, I think 
it's something that can happen. We can't rule it out. Uh, and we still need to find ways of how do we ensure that this happen? Uh, because even in if paper-based data collection, uh, sometimes we just take papers, we drop them, right? We drop them so that they can complete. Then we say we, we will come maybe after a week to pick up the, the papers. How do we know that the right people who were supposed to participate were the ones who were actually completed those questionnaires? We may not know. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mare. Yeah, I think uh, I just want to concur with what uh, Dr. Mnangatri has just said. Even, even in a in a in a in a face-to-face -face kind of a situation, it's not all the time that we have to wait until somebody feels in everything while you are waiting there. Sometimes we just have to come and drop it and say I'll come and, and collect. So we don't know who will feel it in our absence. All what we can only do is to come back and, and pick it up. So I think those, of course, those are real concerns, but I, I think at the end of the day, we need to trust our to trust also our, our respondents in as much as also they trust us to just think that you know they will do the right thing and give us the, the, the most important information that uh, we, we are asking from them. That's what I can say. All right, uh, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Mensa. Thank you, Dr. Mrangatire. Thank you, Dr. Mare. Uh, thank you everyone who has joined. Uh, we hope this discussion is uh, opened uh, some, some new frontiers to, to the challenges you were facing uh, in terms of how do you perhaps proceed uh, with your research uh, during, during this pandemic. So um, these are some of the ideas um, and we, we hope you're gonna reflect on them, uh, try to see which one works for you, uh, depending on, uh, on, the, on, on, on the type and the nature of the research problem that you are, you are dealing with. So um, I think um, those who are in countries where movement has been restricted further, um, so be it, please enjoy. And uh, this is the time you need to reflect on how you, you do your data collection in such processes or in such environments. Um, so um, we hope everyone is going to stay safe, um, put on a mask, uh, wash your hands, and do all other non-pharmaceutical uh, recommendations to, to make sure that we, we try to flatten the cave. So from me and the team, uh, it's, it's bye-bye for now uh, until we meet again next Friday. See you then. Thanks. Thank you.